Пошли в себе. Well, good afternoon, dear participants, members of the jury, research advisors. Uh, we are ready to welcome now Svetlana Viktorovna Tkachova, English language methodologist of the Information and Methodological Center of Kalininsky District of St. Petersburg. Svetlana Viktorovna, you're welcome. Can you hear me now? Can you, can you hear me now? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, so, um, again, I'm sorry, it was my mistake here. So, mm -hmm. so good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all here to this great scientific research conference. Today is an exciting day for all of you, as you will be sharing some incredible ideas, research, findings, and scientific discoveries. We are gathered together here today because of your love and passion for English language and science. And uh, as I knew, we have a fantastic lineup of speakers today. It is my hope that you will, be, you will find the presentations informative, thought-provoking and inspiring. Um, the conference is not just about showcasing your research, but also about learning from one another. You're all here to share your thoughts and ideas. And um, also, I would like to take this moment to thank the organizing committee and personally Alexander Vyacheslavna Smirnova and her colleagues and all the participants for the hard work and dedication in making this conference possible. So, let us begin our journey of exploration and discovery. I wish you all a productive and enriching conference. Thank you. Can I start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, dear research advisors, participants, members of the jury, uh, my name is Lili Gennadna. I'm a moderator of our section Linguistics and Philology. I'm glad to welcome you all to our conference. Uh, the jury selected eight best research works out of 60. So we can say that the competition is really tied. You are all truly uh, best of the best. Uh, I want you to remember that today you'll have not more than seven minutes to present your work. Um, I wish you all good luck. And um, it's time to start our section. The first one presenting her work is Adelia Sulimanova from Simferopol. Unfortunately, she's not she with us. Uh, okay, then uh, the second one is Zhukova Anna from St. Petersburg, Lyceum 144, the eighth grade. Uh, the title of her research is A Cultural Lesson with Elements of a Translations Experiment on the Example of Folklore of Peoples of the White Sea Region in retelling Stepan Pisakov and Boris Shirgin for learning English in the section Spotlight in Russia for eight grades. You're welcome, Anna. and I'm a student of Fosin 144. I choose this topic for myself because Pomer Spiritualist is a great education material, especially for our English lesson in 8th grade while learning Spiritualist in Russia. Uh, we would like more people to find out about fairy tales because that is the uh, uh, main part of Pomer's culture. We are also interested in demonstrating some ancient times between uh, Pomer's and uh, some of European countries. The Pomer's history is closely connected with the British, so that is a great chance to compare fairy tales uh, from both countries and try ourselves in translating as well. Uh, we like more people uh, to see language as a tool uh, of intercultural communication. 
To, this, to do this, we will attempt uh, a translation lesson uh, of uh, more spirituals into English. Uh, next, please. Uh, you can see my bodies in the slides. Uh, we asked my classmates some questions about Pomers. Let's look for the results. Uh, there are 25% uh, that know the main hero of uh, fairy tales, but there are 80% that don't know where Pomers live. Actually, the Bombers have populated the coast of YC until 1970. They were strong, wild, independent people. Uh, Bombers lived in uh, isolation, so there was no cultural communication with the rest of Russia. Until 1970, Bombers didn't know Blalaika, didn't know, wear a lapsi, but only leather shoes. Uh, as also, they had a culture and trade communication with uh, British uh, until 1970. Uh, they went uh, fishing on the Carabas uh, along the northern coasts. Uh, in the fairy tale Martinko, you can see that he easily communicates with British and plays football. In the fairy tale Sambalska Bavalshina by Pisakov, uh, you can see a little argument between uh, Bomber's captain and Aglinski captain. Uh, the original form of accents of Bomber fairy tales is oral only. A good storyteller was very important at this time. So the tales will constantly change slightly because every single storyteller told them differently. Uh, it is thanks to Spank Pesakov and British again that we know them. Both writers were born at the end of uh, 19th century in Arhangelsk and had collected uh, fairy tales for all their lives. You can see the monuments to these outstanding people on the slides. We've compared 10 English and 10 former fairy tales. Uh, there are many similarities between them, but the plots of uh, English fairy tale Benori and the uh, former fairy tale Wonderful Whistle don't be the most similar. Uh, in both uh, fairy tales, somebody heals the brother or sister, and a magic object reveals the secret to the rest of the family. But only in the former version, the whistle revives the boy back to life, and uh, in the English version, a hawk telling the story for ceiling forever. For our translation experience, we took two fairy tales. One of them, Tilly, is about the uh, adventure of Clever Shish, a vagabond who knows how to cheat a prize, a king, and a good person. The folk tales about Shish starts in the time of Ivan the Terrible when Shish recalls Trump. Uh, it is thanks to, to uh, very Shagin that we know them. Uh, he has collected more than 100 fairy tales about Shish. Uh, during our research, I released on Vian Commissar for the translation. Translating proverbs was a little challenge. Uh, some uh, in both fairy tales, some anatopia and introductory words tend to be used to uh, show us national and historical flavor. For our translation experiment lesson, we took uh, an old Pinega fairy tale, Laziness in the Tale. That is the best example of how uh, can characters uh, act in the face of danger or to ignore it. The message of uh, Fairy tale is still relevant today. The children were divided into two teams for a competition, uh, and uh, I told them to read 11 Pomorian folklore and 11 English folk tales. Uh, the competition involves analyzing uh, fairy tales uh, and uh, trying some translation techniques by Kunsar. Uh, the children Uh, were very interested. Let's look for my conclusion. Uh, there are also on the slide. Here is the literature of what I was using. Questions? Okay. No questions. No questions. No questions. No 
Uh, Daniel Zapramut of Daniel Popov's, Popov School 119, 8th grade, uh, with the title Gamers Vocabulary. You're welcome. Project Daniel the uh, and Daniel Popov are pleased to present our work to you. Uh, along the new technologies, uh, the terms associated with them, uh, and uh, uh, with them, and uh, firmly rooted uh, in our speech. Uh, but in the uh, in the original, uh, the terms uh, are too no. cumbersome, uh, no. too cumbersome, and inconvenient. Uh, so in many cases, they are uh, processed, adapted by the user. Uh, and uh, becoming part of the conversion style of the speech. Uh, now let's talk about the relevance. Uh, after contacting the survey among uh, students in grades 8a, 9b, we found out that uh, then more 90% percent of school children actively using computer slang in uh, curricular speech. Uh, the following slides show the relevance of uh, the topic selection, uh, the um, purpose of the, uh, our modest uh, research indicated, its uh, subject and object are named, uh, a hypothesis is highlighted, uh, the, terms, uh, the tasks are formulated and the range of, uh, a range of uh, Uh, and the range of methods for solving uh, for solving uh, tasks are used defined here. Uh, slang is a special uh, uh, is a special form of language. Uh, words then uh, are often words then are often uh, uh, considered as a relation uh, relation. Uh, Of the norms of the standard language, uh, of the norms of the standard language, uh, these are very expressive ironic words uh, that uh, serve to denote uh, that serve to denote uh, objects are spoken about uh, in everyday life. Number one, uh, this method of education includes borrowings uh, grammatically. Uh, mastered by the Russian language. Uh, in, in the case uh, the word uh, indicates the word sorry the word borrowed uh, the word war, with uh, entirely with its pronunciation, spelling and meaning. Uh, number two uh, word formation models of Russian uh, language added uh, to the original uh, of uh, English uh, basis certain methods. Uh, uh, certain methods, so this include first of all the minute of uh, suffixes K or K, uh, EK. A huge role in the formation of gaming slang was played by the emergence of the um, uh, international networks of uh, Esports and esports players who are perfectly proficient in gaming slang. Uh, gaming slang uh, is uh, characterized by brevity and therefore it is assimilated on the fly. Uh, in practical work, work, in practical work uh, the uh, Western method uh, has become the leading one. Um, where to uh, determine the degree of use of uh, 
slang uh, by uh, school students. Uh, questions were presented and a uh, questionnaire was conducted. The age of respondents are uh, 15 to 16 years old. Um, 44, pe pe uh, 44 students took uh, part in this survey. Uh, where most of respondents have an idea about uh, slang in general. The second uh, question was about using uh, slang in your speech. The first question was about uh, the most popular words uh, in uh, in uh, uh, slang. Uh, as a result uh, of our research, we came to conclusion um, what uh, what is gaming sign is conditional language with which uh, people exchange uh, information in various games. Uh, the emergence of uh, gaming slang is associated uh, with um, with the emergence of massive online games. Where it has become an integral uh, part of the uh, gameplay. Uh, having uh, completed a number uh, of tasks um, we, during which we found out uh, that uh, slang is uh, used both at household level and in profession, uh, profession, professional communities uh, such as programmers and cyber, cyber sportsmen, uh, we found we we convinced uh, that uh, slant is uh, vulgarizes uh, the uh, speaker, the speaker's oral speech, but uh, slant is an uh, uh, organic and necessary part of uh, vocabulary, uh, vocabulary. Uh, community is passionate about uh, computer technology. Um, after our, our hypothesis, and we finished our we have finished our hypothesis. After that, uh, we uh, started making uh, our uh, gamers vocabulary. Uh, thank you for your attention. Now we are ready to answer your questions. There are no questions. Boys, it's obvious that you are very interested in this topic. Uh, but, but what is your favorite game and why? Uh, as for me, my favorite game is uh, Dota 2 because uh, there are a lot of um, uh, mechanics and uh, characters in uh, this game. And what about you? Uh, to be honest, my favorite sport is of oh, my favorite games game. Uh, is uh, maybe um, PUBG because I really like uh, uh, type of this uh, genre of these games. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And so, can I ask a question to you? Can we ask questions? Okay. Only one question. Yeah, only one question. We create the product, yes. Uh, our point is uh, uh, to learn uh, to learn more, more about your game mm -hmm. Thank you so much, boys. You may take your seat. Thanks. Well, uh, thank you, Daniel uh, and Dania. Mm, dear members of the jury, uh, you're welcome to ask questions. Please be more active asking questions. The next one is Galavanov Ernest, uh, St. Petersburg School 176, 8th grade, with the title Features of the Translation of Neologisms from Russian into English in Fiction, using the example of Nikolai Gogol's novel Dead Souls and Tuchev's poetry. You're welcome, Ernest. Thank you, great. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, there are still commission members. I'm a student of the Tango Rainbow Law of Law. The supervisor of my work is developed in Halic. Uh, the theme of my project is features of the translation of realisms from Russian into English, in fiction using the example of Nikolai Lobov's novel Dead Souls and Pictures Poetry. We think the topic of our work is relevant uh, because Lobov's works and Pictures Poetry are popular not only in Russia but also in the world. It is evident that readers should know the actual meaning of neologism because these terms give people a chance to understand the whole meaning of the poem or novel. Uh, our hypothesis is that foreign translators sometimes it's not correctly convey the meaningful and emotional components um, of the of the neologisms while translating them in uh, Russian texts. Uh, the purpose of the work is to analyze the correctness uh, of uh, the translation uh, from Russian into English of the author's neologisms on the example of the work that is sold by Nikolai Nobel and poetry by Victoria Kinchin. Uh, in accordance with the purpose of the work, the following tasks or criteria can be formulated. Uh, firstly, uh, define the concept of neologism and uh, determine what place it occupies in the world's literature. Uh, secondly, identify uh, problems that arise uh, while translating them uh, into English. Uh, thirdly, identify linguistic ways of translating neologisms. Um, fourthly, uh, find scientists that studied neologisms. And fifthly, uh, show these linguistic ways in the work that solves by Nikolai Bobo and supported by Pedro Fitch. Moreover, uh, uh, we need to find out which of them are used more than the others. Uh, as a result, in chapter 1, we define that neologism is a relatively recent or isolated term or phrase um, that may be in process of entering common use but has not been fully accepted in the mainstream language. Um, the main difficulty in translating neologisms uh, is an understanding of uh, it's, it's an understanding of uh, a new word. Um, <clears throat> the actual translation of a neologism, uh, the meaning, uh, which meaning is already known to the translator, uh, is a relatively simple task. Um, so, it, so uh, it is solved by using the methods given below, depending on which type of uh, words this neologism belongs to. Uh, <clears throat> At the first stage, uh, we found out linguistic ways uh, of translating neologisms. They are divided into tracing, transliteration, transcription, and functional analog. Uh, we also found out scientists uh, that studied neologisms. Uh, there are Vladimir Kivovich Kak, Esther Maximovna Mednikova, Nadezhda Zaharovna Kakatilova, and Vera Ivanovna Zabutkina. In, uh, in the chapter 2, uh, we uh, the linguistic methods uh, of translating neologisms were considered by the examples. We understood that uh, foreign translators can accurately convey uh, the meaning of neologisms. We also refuted our hypothesis and made a table. Uh, it showed us that transliteration and, trans and transcription aren't used at all because this. Um, Types uh, don't, con uh, don't convey the main meaning right. Thanks for watching. I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Uh, well, members of the jury, you're welcome to ask questions. Well, Ernest, then I'll ask you the question. Uh, why did you choose Google's novel and to, to choose poetry in particular? What was the reason of choosing this uh, book, I mean, this novel? Um, you can go. Yeah. 
they are my favorite writers, so I chose them. Uh, in my opinion, uh, they are really talented. And um, in their uh, work, you can uh, you can see a lot of sense. That's all. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Ernest. The next one presenting her research work is Yekaterina Bezubenko, School 320, 9th grade. Uh, the title of the research is Comparative Analysis of the Expression of the Theme of... Ah, it, mm, the topic changed a little bit. Disclosure of the theme, theme of patriotism through a comparative analysis of the poems of Alexander Pushkin and Robert Burns. You're welcome. Good afternoon, dear members of the jury. Good afternoon, dear participants. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ekaterina Bezulinko. I'm a ninth grade student of School for Hamilton I would like to present my research work on the topic Disclosure of the Theme of Patriotism for a Comparative Analysis of Poems of Alexander Pushkin and Robert Burns. The choice of the topic is due to the fact that many poets and writers have always expressed their love and glorified their imagination. Uh, how different are the manifestations of the theme of patriotism in various linguistic cultures? I would like to present on the basis of a comparative analysis of poems by Pushkin and Burns. Therefore, the purpose of my work is to find out whether Pushkin's poetry differs from Burns' poetry in expressing the theme of patriotism and examining the theme of poems. Uh, the objectives of my work are to find out all the information, uh, conduct a survey, make a conclusion based on the survey, um, analyze the text, and answer the main question. Uh, and also I define the problem. The reflection of the theme of patriotism in the poetry of two different linguistic cultures on the example of poems by Alexander Pushkin and Robert Burns. <clears throat> I determined a hypothesis. Suppose that the expression of the theme of patriotism in uh, the poetry of these two authors does not differ, despite uh, the differences uh, in the linguistic cultures. <clears throat> the subject of my work is the theme of patriotism in the lyrics of uh, Alexander Pushkin and Robert Burns, and the object is common and distinctive features of the poems of Alexander Pushkin. On the slide, you can see the methods that I used to, uh, to make my research work. It was to find all the information, to study the poems, uh, to make a survey and analyze the similarities and differences in their works, and also to generalize the information on the main topic. To <clears throat> determine the relevance of my work, for this I needed to conduct a survey. It had the following questions, which you can see on the slide. <clears throat> the results of the survey you can also see in the slides. According to them, I realized that uh, Pushkin's work about uh, motherland is at least known, and teenagers know almost nothing about birds. So, I make a conclusion that this uh, topic is relevant for research and will allow my peers to expand their horizons. Also, this material can be used in lessons. So, <clears throat> Pushkin and Burns are the greatest poets of their countries. People pay tribute to the memory of them by celebrating their birthdays. On June 6 is the day of Russian language, and Burns' birthday on the January 25th is the national holiday in Scotland called Burns Night. The theme of patriotism occupies one of the main places in their books. Great poets teach us to love our motherland, but for them the homeland was not only the places where they were born, but also people whose way they were wanted with. Poets managed to reveal uh, the whole uniqueness of their compatriots. Starting the practical part, I uh, determined the main stages that are usually used in the RNA format, which you can see on the slide. It is theme, composition, genre, direction, mode, stanza, In the course of comparing the poems of the game I visited by Alexander Pushkin and My Heart is in the Highlands by Robert Burns, I found out that they are united by the theme of 
patriotism and longing for the Nazi plan. The mood is also similar because nostalgia is clearly expressed in both poems. <clears throat> However, the environment and attitude to this topic is different. So Robert Burns being a sentimentalist with great attention to emotions and feelings, while Pushkin in turn, at a later time of his work, wrote in realism. If earlier his works were predominantly romantic, now he describes everything without unnecessary beauty. Um, compositions in Burns are also different. Pushkin's again I visited is blank verse, it has no rhyme. Also, it is not divided into stanzas. Uh, Burns has the opposite. He uses a song form, the verses in the chorus, and the rhyme adjoining it. And returning to the similarity, it can be noted that both authors use very coherent and nature as their main images. For example, Pushkin has three fir trees and new tribe, and Burns has all these mountains and woods. Based on the foregoing, I realized that uh, the theme of patriotism in Russian and English uh, linguistic cultures has certain differences because of the ways of historical development, uh, features, and uh, other things. But uh, as a result, I can say that it doesn't matter what uh, language the poem is written in, because the love of the poet can be even in that way. And uh, the, the theme of uh, love for the motherland is devoid of semantic differences when it's conveyed in poetry. Thank you for your attention. I can I present answer your questions if you have any. Uh, sorry, uh, and is that only no, because do you think that it is only like uh, patriotic Christian that uh, some people know? Because Pushkin is very famous, like in all countries, and uh, all people are like, reading uh, his uh, poems uh, in all languages. And while Burns, uh, I don't really think so. Oh, of course, patriotism is not the only reason why these poets are famous. Uh, for example, Pushkin has very famous. Uh, for example, books like Yevgeny Onegin and Boris Lebanov. And of course, it's not only because of patriotism. The plot there, I think, is very interesting. I think and it catches the eye of the reader. That is why. Any questions, members of the jury? You're welcome to ask questions. Then I'll ask you. You mentioned that the style of writing of Robert Burns and Pushkin is different a lot. In many ways, which style is closer to you? What do you like more? I think for me, closer is Pushkin's poetry, especially because he is Russian and I'm Russian. We are from the same country, and I think we have a uh, distinct vision for a lot of things. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for printing your work. Can you give it to Helena Susan? I think she wants to see it. Um, well, uh, thank you very much, Yekaterina. The next one is Daria Kozlova from Lyceum 144, 10th grade. The place of Russian borrowings in modern English. You're welcome, Daria. Good afternoon, my name is Daria Kozlova and I would like to present you my research work which is named the Quest of Russian Borrowings in Modern English. English is the language of international communication and got this status thanks to an accessible grammar, lexical composition and flexibility. It can be noted that the Russian language borrowings are increasingly entering the English language. I was interested what words came in English and when. This is why I have uh, chosen this research topic. The such of our research you can see on the slide. In the investigation of the process of Russian borrowings in English is real nowadays. English is one of the most popular languages to study in our country, but only few people know that there are words in it that have Russian origin. 
Um, I believe that this research will allow students to realize the value of their native language, its diversity, and widen their vocabulary. The value of study is seen in the fact that borrowings from the Russian language in English um, arouse the interest of modern teenagers as a way to explain their vocabulary. The goal of the research is to get acquainted with the Russian audience with the examples of Bavarian Russian words to, to simplify the study of um, another language. Uh, to achieve the goal, the following tasks were set to look at the slide. Borrowings from the Russian language are entered into English for a long period of time. Look at this slide. Uh, each historical period introduced a certain kind of words into English language that characterized the historical, political, and social phenomena of uh, this particular period. Uh, most Russian borrowings in English are echoisms, uh, historicisms, and uh, really fond words that characterize the cultural and uh, national features of Russia. However, there is uh, a layer of common and frequently used Russian borrowings in the English-speaking community. Um, the Russian linguist of the 19th century, Alexander Patevnia, suggested the classification of words by the method of borrowings and according to the denoted concept. You can see them on the slide. Uh, words of Russian origin play a special role in English language, and they are using speech that becomes necessary due to the lack of proper words. Uh, it is not an object or phenomenon. Uh, we have tried to highlight the main features of Russian borrowings in English. You can see them on the slide. Uh, words of Russian origin more beautiful that and be greater account to Russian language and uh, how often they themselves use them in uh, their speech. To find the answer, we uh, match a survey of the jump rate of uh, 144 and the results of this survey you can see on the slide. Uh, Russian borrowings in modern English are an integral part of the vocabulary. Consideration and um, study of their meanings and, uh, that, and teaching their content using speech will help modern teenagers to increase the general level of, of a country and arouse uh, interest of um, learning English. Borrowings does not harm the language, but only enriches it. English language, uh, which in borrowed words, I from different languages remains unique and strong, and uh, knowledge of the features of Russian borrowings help uh, Russian uh, people to better understand uh, this language. And uh, here you can see the list of sources used. Thank you for attention. Uh, now I can answer on the question. Dear members of the jury, you're welcome to ask your questions. Well, um, if there are no questions, I'll ask you a question. Why is the necessity of Russian borrowings in modern English indisputable? Um, because uh, Russian borrowings uh, can uh, help teenagers to learn uh, English language and... Uh, the English language. And uh, this is... Um, the, 
Don't hesitate, it's okay. This is uh, the main idea of my research work. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Daria. The next one is Sushinsky Andrei, let's like say 144, 10th grade, uh, with the title Conservatism and Linguistic Purism in Modern English. You're welcome, Andrei. Good day, okay, can I make it? Oh, sure. Go ahead. So, good day, indeed, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andre, and I'll be presenting a project that I was just mentioned by the kind lady and other girls with the name of Conservatism in the English language. And I won't bore you too much with the formalities. Here you can see the contents. Other also appear a tidy later in the next slide. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I believe that my projects to relevant slides in the in-depth analysis of pro another project known as English. Uh, I'll get to that a bit later, so it's not a misspelling. Right now. Here you can see the context again. And there's a couple of tasks that I was had to face. Uh, I had to pinpoint the educational potential of English as a project and how it could potentially benefit the students not only in my museum, but obviously anyone who's interested in my work. And let's see to the first chapter, English, you can see the end page description right about here. So what is English? English is an artificial form of English created by an author and writer, Paul Anderson, uh, that favors the usage of Germanic only uh, words in English. Now what are purisms in themselves? Those are the words that are retrospective to the languages uh, family that it belongs to. Uh, often they're needed when there is, a, let's say, call it a pollution of uh, foreign words in a language. So certain words will be reintroduced or recalled according to the English family. Now, how did that come about? Well, uh, English in itself is a Germanic language and it belongs to the Western branch, being a sister language to Frisian. Uh, what that should imply is that the majority of its vocabulary is supposed to be Germanic, but if we take a closer look, we'll see that that is definitely not the case. Um, the Germanic part only takes about like a quarter of the total, and the bigger part of it is Romance, or generated words, uh, and a couple of others. There is Greek, there is some languages, and some words that were derived from names. But how did that happen? Well, I promise you this, that if you open up Google right now and Google linguistic disaster, this is exactly what you're going to see. And we're going to take a look at the history of England. Uh, in the beginning of the 10th century, actually 11th century, uh, the Norman conquest took place, uh, led by William the Conqueror, the Norman Duke. And he brought French to the British Isles which meant that it became the language of the nobility. So in order to make your way through the society, you needed to learn French. Uh, and it's evident that that is responsible for the uh, introduction of a number, a great number of French borrowings and Latin borrowings as well into the English common language. Uh, here you can see a piece of text written by a priest in, I believe, the 14th century. And I mean, to my account, I think about a half of the terms and uh, most words are still of Germanic origin, but you can definitely see uh, the influence of the French language also not only in the vocabulary used, but in spelling. And for example, here you can see the word quoi, which is supposed to be what, but spelled uh, in a French manner. Now, so there were certain attempts to purify English uh, undertaken. The first ones can be drawn traced back to the 16th century, where a number of uh, literary uh, creators uh, were trying to spread the message of importance of using, of using authentic English vocabulary, using Anglo-Saxon words, as opposed to the uh, uh, Romance words. Uh, they were not, however, quite successful, and a number of other attempts were taken in the 20th century by the authors that we know better than the ones mentioned previously. Uh, and uh, now, getting to the breath stacks, there were certain methods used so, for example, the old song was obviously bringing the archaic vocabulary that was no longer uh, of use in a language, um, which is 
principally the most common way uh, purism can be in entering a language. But if there are, are certain terms for certain things in a language that will be offensive to its uh, language family, you can just create them, which is what Paul Anderson did with his project called English. Now, there is a number of methods that it uses. Uh, I'll get to that in a bit. We'll be studying a text of his that was written in English. And here on the screen, you can see the methods that he invented. So the first one is referencing the other Germanic languages. And um, given that uh, English is a less Germanic languages, a yeah, language could obviously reference uh, German, Dutch, and I mean, Frisian could also take place here, but Frisian is not a very popular language, unfortunately. And here you can see how basically it's just mostly the Kalk method, where you take the word in Dutch, for example, German, and quite literally just translate it into English, uh, word by word. Uh, the other method used was a morphine translation. So there are many examples of that, but the one that I found is Adam, because the text that uh, Paul Anderson wrote is called A Class Session of Holding, which uh, translates to uh, the atomic theory. And here he took certain parts, uh, there were the morphemes uh, of ancient Greek and translated them into English. Now, word combinations, probably the most fun that there is here. Uh, basically, what you do here is just take, uh, you could also reference other Germanic languages here, but basically you take a word, combined with another word, to give it a different meaning. So, for example, word, word can uh, for science, word book for dictionary, speech grammar for grammar, and certain, uh, here is a very interesting detail, uh, Paul Anderson referenced the Anglo-Saxon beliefs uh, in their pagan gods to create names for chemical elements. Uh, the fourth method is meaning expression, as I call it. Uh, basically, you take a word that could also could have a meaning that's uh, similar in certain regards to the word, to other words. So you can see that being the case with uh, the word beholding, which was given the, uh, the meaning of theory. Now the practical usage uh, here is again comes from the text of Paul Anderson. Here you can see certain words being used uh, that could uh, replace the ones that are already being used in English in order to not only expand your vocabulary but perhaps perhaps make more creative. Uh, there's a, a couple of other examples. So for again very common words that are not of Germanic origin, uh, substituted for the ones that are of the Germanic origin. And I conducted also a survey, and here you can see some of the results. A lot of students are not, excuse me for that, but a lot of students are not familiar uh, with the topic of, uh, of purism. Only 3% find it uh, crucial to find out the meanings of the words that are not familiar with. A certain percent do not find an interesting study the etymology of words and learning English, so that's a bit unfortunate which drove us to the conclusion that if the students of the class were to actually invest some of their time into studying uh, these words that are offensive to English uh, language, they could not only expand their vocabulary and make it more creative, but also find, learn more about uh, the language's history. That's about it. Uh, if you got any questions, that's by the way. Thank you very much, Andrew. You're welcome to ask Andrew questions. Well, no questions, Andrew, then I'll ask you. Remind us all once again, what is pure English? Pure English is basically a hypothetical or a theoretical form of English that favors the usage of mostly Germanic words or the Anglo-Saxon words. Other retrospective to the English's original family and reflects its uh, historical vocabulary. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you have any Thank questions? You. No questions. Then we continue with Kaltsov Gleb from School 135, 11th grade. Uh, to be or not to be? Anglicisms in the different generations speech. You're welcome. Uh, hello there, members of the jury, guests, and participants of the conference. My name is Kaltsov, and I would like to present your attention my project on the topic of 
Examples of some of the most common anglicisms so you can see on the screen. Uh, when, I was, was, when, I was when, I was, when I was choosing the topic of the project, I got most interested in modern relations in interaction between different age groups, especially nowadays when unstoppable globalization just um, cannot but be a national problem. Hence, the relevance of my research, which lies in the misunderstanding in the field of social interaction between different groups of society and generations of people. Um, the influence of ring borrowings plays an ambitious role. Although it expands the vocabulary of native Russian speakers, it makes it easier for young people to express their thoughts and feelings. At the same time, the originality and unique beauty of our language are lost. Uh, new words often confuse the older generation and many people simply, cannot, simply can't keep up with such an active expansion of the language. And this at least makes it difficult for people of different generations to communicate and creates a huge language gap between them. And in order to eliminate such phenomena, the goal of my research was set, uh, namely to identify ways to solve problems in the area of communication within different age groups. Uh, by creating an electronic dictionary of covering boring words and expressions. To achieve the goal, I set the following tasks. The hypothesis of research is the assumption that in many situations the use of anglicism is justified because it brings brightness and convenience to our speech, as well as helps teenagers express their thoughts and even partly contributes to the study of English. Uh, borrowing words is a natural and necessary process of language development, and there is no language that would be completely free from foreign influences. Uh, now, let's move on to the content of the project. In the theoretical part of my research, I presented the origin of borrowing words and languages in Russia, the stages on their way of, of rooting in the language, uh, ways of their formation, their sites, and reasons for borrowings. Now we the kind of the scheme, which uh, briefly reveals the uh, main points. Uh, all this data formed the theoretical basis of my research, which helped me in my further work, especially in the practical part. Uh, let's just get to it. I conduct a questionnaire survey among two generations, students of uh, school number 145 and their peer friends, versus their parents and relatives. Uh, on the screen now, you can see some one of the most important questions. Uh, also, respondents had to answer whether they know the meaning of um, anglicism, like uh, label, hoodie, trolling, and so on, or not. The results showed that everyone uses anglicism in their speech, in one way or another. Most people don't see borrowings as a danger to their native language, and don't think that anglicisms clog it up. But most importantly, unlike teenagers who understand the modern slang well, um, many words remain unknown to the older generations, which proves our concerns about the problem of um, interaction between different age groups. And such, pro such problems should not be neglected. And that is why I decided to develop an electronic dictionary of covering Boris words and expressions in order to systemize knowledge in the field of anglicisms and provide a wide range of people of any generation with the opportunity to get acquainted with the most common anglicisms and even slight expressions, uh, which will help people better perceive information both in everyday life and uh, in certain specialized activities. Uh, on the screen now you can see uh, demonstration of how the dictionary works using the word uh, crush as an example. Um, well, let's summarize the results. Uh, the objectives of the study were accomplished, the goal was fully achieved, as well as the dictionary of modern slang was created. Uh, with the help of theoretical base and questionnaire, the hypothesis was um, 
proved and confirmed by all responses of respondents. Uh, in conclusion, I don't think that borrowing is something harmful. It is wrong to judge the need of anglo students to the language. Borrowing is an integral part of our life and the prosperity of the language in general. And after all, language is a self-developing mechanism that knows how to get rid of unnecessary and excessive. So, if we use anglicisms reasonably, preserving the greatness of our native language, borrowings will bring only benefits, and we can probably say anglicism only. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready to answer questions. Any questions? You're welcome to ask questions. Well, Greg, then I will ask you a question. Uh, what anglices do you usually use in your speech? Well, uh, many of them, but uh, most common uh, are the ones that we don't think that we're anglices, like the internet, the website, and and uh, so on for dogs, they saw hands. Any questions? No questions. Thank you so much. Uh, Adelia Suleimanova, we're ready to listen to you. Adelia is from Simferopol International School, the 7th grade, and the title of her research is Linguistic Mix of Language Influence in Advertising Texts. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. My name is Adelia Sulemanova. Uh, my research work linguistic means of influence in English advertising text. Uh, so the media has rapidly burst into our lives, striking with unusual effects, calling with tapping offers, captivating with illusory hopes. The use of information text by representatives of different sciences is due to the difficulties of identifying the actual psychological and linguistic in them. For this reason, many works have been carried out at the junction of various disciplines, disciplines which emphasize the multidimensional nature of the phenomenon of information text, its complex interdisciplinary disciplinary nature. Media texts have become so widespread that, uh, that uh, it is impossible not to consider their powerful influence or the formation of the linguistic picture of the world. They function in the field of communication are, and are associated with shortened so social rules, conditions, norms adopted in this area are characterized by short linguistic specifics. The relevance of the research is connected with the condition of the modern information social society, uh, which has complicated and constantly improving technologies of influencing, influencing uh, con consciousness. The need to study linguistic means of influence, such as scientists as Arsky, uh, Van Dyck, Dabrasklonskaya, Dotsinka, Karamurza, and etc. The purpose, uh, purpose of the work is to identify and describe the complex of linguistic means influencing the knowledge, opinions, and intention of the addressee based on the study of the essence of the media. The achievement of the research goal provides for the solution of a set of tasks to consider the role and function of mass media in a modern information society, to study peculiarities uh, of the language of the English language press, describe the linguistic means ad advertising text. The object of the object of uh, this research is English language newspapers, which have a significant <coughs> effect of, on, the inf on, on the formation of spiritual and material wireless modern society. Uh, the subject of the study is linguistic means 
in information text fixed in the language paradigm, paradigm. The research material was the text of English, uh, English language uh, newspapers, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Daily Telegraph, the Sun, the Time, and etc. Methods such as systematization of material and anal analysis of newspapers articles were used in the work. The structure of the work, the research work, consists of an introduction, two chapters, a conclusion, and a list of references. Uh, the name of first chapter is theoretical provisions of the study were considered the role and function of mass media in the conditions of modern information. Uh, the second chapter uh, is named linguistic means of influence in advertising text. Advertising is currently one of the influential uh, cultural phenomena involved uh, in the formation of the information environment of modern men. The word advertising uh, is of Latin origin and means events aimed at the creating widespread awareness of something attracting uh, consumers, a biased dissemination of information about someone, about something <coughs> in order to create popularization. Advertising ad text. Uh, so uh, the genre of advertising is widely represented on the pages of newspapers. Uh, the genre of particular of a particular advertisement can be considered as the result of sequence of acts of choice carried out by its center at various stage of text formation and conditioned by a number objective and subjective factors. The choice of the type of advertising and the linguistic features of the materials reflect the so-called structural and general model of the newspaper, which in turn is one of the components of the experience expressive and stylistic model in public publication. Uh, let's see linguistic means of influence in advertising text. The effect effectiveness of an advertising text depends on a successful combination of all its components, image, sound, verbal parts. At the same time, research notes the paramount importance of the verbal component of advertising the verbal text. In fact, the language of ads is sometimes more important than the visual aspect, writes the English author Gillian Dyer. The verbal part of the advertising text has an uh, internal structure. Is As a rule, this is the title, the main advertising text, and the echo phrase. Um, uh, the so-called echo phrase completes the verbal part of the advertising text, which also carries a large functional uh, load. As a rule, uh, the final echo phrase um, contains the name of the advertising, advertised um, trademark of product in combination with the memorable ex expression uh, advertising slogan. Uh, for example, TikTok real ice cream, Ninetta an unforgettable experience. Uh, linguistic means for expressing expressiveness and attractive of uh, advertising text are also uh, of great importance. Let's look at different levels of the language. Uh, phonemic means. Uh, phonemic means uh, the sound appearance of the advertising text 
is an important component of its success with the recipient at the phonetic level. The creators of advertising text must often use various repetition, both sound and lexical um, alliteration as the repetition of identical uh, ho homogenous Adile, you have lost second time is up. Um, uh, so lexical means of expression, a verbal combination by this, discover, discover that, try some today, don't forget, treat yourself, let's make uh, things better, uh, come to where the flavor is, the imperative, buy, try, ask, uh, get, see, call, feel, and etc. For example, by the car, over the road. Attributive fair phrases, uh, life's good, uh, do more, feel better, life longer. The advertising metaphor, smart money knows where to go, put a tiger in your tank. Uh, the antithesis, a space, uh, a space interior maximum, uh, and comment minimum. A stylistic means of expression. Uh, ideas come alive with Pepsi. A word game fun for some the essence is to see. For others to see the essence, maybe she born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. Uh, so, conclusion. Um, the media play a huge role in society and perform a number of functions. Informational, cultural, educational, advertising, ideological. Uh, the more social, cultural and ide ideological change in society, the more active the dynamics of the media understood uh, as a set of uh, quantitative and qualitative change. Uh, change in the mass media over a shortened period of time. The purpose, essence, and function of a uh, newspaper text are directly reflected uh, in its language. It is the language of the newspaper's text that implements the functions of information and means and different linguistic levels. Okay. Uh, linguistic I think time is up. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, you had to speak for seven minutes. You've been talking for ten. Uh, just the last seconds, please. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. Adelia, time is up. You've been talking for 10 minutes. Um, the last seconds, please. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. It's all. Well, now that was the end, and members of the jury need some time to fulfill a table with the results. We have 10 minutes break now. Please stay with us.
Well, dear participants, research advisors, members of the jury, the results of the competition have, have been calculated. As I said before, the competition is really tight. You are eight out of 60. Um, it was really very hard today to choose winners, to be honest with you. Um, I, uh, I really thank you for the inspiring works, uh, research works, for very informative ones. That was interesting for me to listen to them sincerely. Uh, we thank you all uh, for taking part in our conference. We look forward to further cooperation. And we believe that you will continue working on your research projects in the future. We believe in your future success. And thank you again. Today, we decided that all of you are prize winners. That's the Prize winner. The diploma of a prize winner is given to Galavanov Ernest Dmitrievich, uh, school number 176. Thank you. Um, it's given to Kozlova Darya Olegovna, by same 144. Zapranotov Daniel, school 119. Um, mm -hmm. Papov Daniel Eduardovich, school 119. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four winners today. You saw the scores on the screen, yeah? We have four winners. Sushinsky Andrei, Lyceum 144. Thank you, Andrew, my congratulations. Zhukova Anna, Lyceum 144. Thank you, Anna. Bezubinka Yekaterina. And Kalsov Gleb School 135. Once again, thank you very much for such creative, informative, and inspiring works. We're looking forward to see you at our school again. Goodbye.